one. Hey, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my show. I am doing two shows in one day. Can you believe it? I'm uh, being super busy today. I guess I'm leveling up too. So, um, of course, I talked about my series on my last show, but just in case you're tuning in, this is the Hey DFW Level Up 2.0 series. And in this series, we're going to focus on all aspects of leveling up. It's during the summer, so it's during the summer. So we're going to talk about leveling up spiritually, financially, mentally, emotionally, and business. So I'm going to cover all those topics all summer. And we're just going to learn and level up together, you guys. So I want to introduce my guest today. I've been knowing her for years. It is so good to just see her grow and blossom in her career and do her thing, you guys. I'm super excited to introduce her. Let me get her bio for you. She is from Montgomery, Alabama. Shouts out to Montgomery. Um, LaConya Murray is the brand attorney that helps clients throughout the United States protect their brand content and ideas through trademarks, copyrights, and contracts. She's the host of the Own Your Genius podcast, where she discusses topics that help entrepreneurs build their business, grow their brands, and own their genius. This includes spilling the legal tea, which uses pop culture to explain complicated legal principles. You guys, welcome LaConya Murray to the show. Yay, fake audience. <laughs> hey, hey. hey Cody. Hey. How's everything going? Everything is going great. I just got one correction and I gotta make it. I'm sorry. I am Go not ahead, from yes. Montgomery. I'm not You're from not. Montgomery. I, I just live here and I I don't okay. yes, I'm not. I just I just can't say. I can't even claim it. So I'm I'm not from Montgomery. I live here. That's all I want to okay. say. Okay. Well she That's lives all. there, you I'm, guys. Where are you from originally? <laughs> Let's just give a shout out where you from originally. I'm going to say Madison. So my folks were in the military. So I did a lot okay. of traveling when I was younger. I stayed in one place for high school. That was the only that was the first school that I stayed all four years. So uh -huh. I went to different schools all the way up until high school. And I stayed yeah. all four years. So Madison. I okay. That's Madison, in Alabama, Alabama too? Is that in Alabama too? Mm -hmm. yeah, Mad okay. yeah. Madison, Alabama. Yeah. Huntsville okay. area. Oh, okay. Well, shout yeah. out to Madison. Yeah. Shout out, y'all. Okay. All right, you guys. Um. So today's show, of course, we're going to be talking about, you know, the law, contracts, copyrights, and trademarks. But I always kind of like to get a little bit back, more background on my guests. So um, can you tell us what made you decide of all aspects of law? What about this portion of law made you decide? So this is what I'm going to focus on and this is what I'm going to do. Great question. I wanted to help business owners ever since. Like, so first of all, I knew I was going to be a lawyer like in middle school. When I got to high school, I knew I wanted to help business owners. And so when I graduated and took the bar um, and I opened up my own practice, I kind of went astray from that just a little bit and started doing everything under the sun. But I wanted to go back and help business owners. I always wanted to go back to that. And trademarks, um, basically intellectual property is an area of law where one you don't see very many black attorneys and you definitely don't see very many black female attorneys, especially at the time when I decided to niche down to that. And we need representation because we have a history of having our intellectual property taken from us because we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And so I believe I, I strongly, strongly believe that if we are going to succeed as a community, as a black community, that we have to have our own businesses. We have to have our own land. We have to have our own businesses so that we can employ our own people. One of those aspects is understanding and identifying and protecting your intellectual property. That's why I do what I do. Okay, I love it, I love it. And you know what? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, because I actually, um, when you t initially told me that it was what you were gonna go in, I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know, because you're so used to people being like defense attorneys and things of that mm -hmm. sort. So that is really cool, and I like that it's broad. Mm -hmm. I like that it's broad. So you guys, you're in Dallas, you can still use her because is broad and why is trademark broad? Why is it not state to state like other laws? Like why is that? Because it's, it's under federal. So trademarks, the trademark law that I practice is federal. Is um so you can only get it if your business or your goods or services are available in multiple states. So anytime you have something dealing with multiple states, it's federal. And then copyrights don't actually exist in a state law on the state law level. They were enacted by Congress, so they are automatically federal. So you can't even bring a federal lawsuit unless you for copyrights unless you have federal registration. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Thank you for that clarification because I always um, want, wanted to know that. So um, 
we're going to discuss B. Simone. So I do, uh, let's see, can I uh, switch the, the screen here? Well, I probably don't need to, but so we got um, B. Simone. That's what we're going to discuss. So she is a renowned media personality, comedian, rapper, and artist who recently released her book, Baby Girl, Manifest the Life You Want. And it pretty much became a topic of uh, plagiarism scandal. According to an article on Complex.com, a, a sm some well smaller content creator um, goes by the name of Boss Girl Bloggers was affected by this scandal. B. Simone released a statement earlier this month that the book was outsourced by the company and she apologized. So I have a two part question for you. One, how can smaller content creators protect themselves? And two, how can celebrities like B. Simone avoid making the same mistake? Okay, great. So the first part of that question is how can smaller businesses or content creators protect themselves? You always have to understand what intellectual property is. That's one of the challenges that I see now for content creators and new business owners like B. Simone. They don't understand what copyrights protect. So copyrights protect work that are in original fixed form. And the person that owns the, is the person that actually brought it to life. So... For instance, B. Simone said that she outsourced the writing of her book. Unless there's something written in a contract, that outsource, that that book could be owned by the person that actually wrote it, unless the contract says otherwise. So when you go and get a logo, the person that brought that logo to life, unless they are an employee doing the scope, doing the work in the scope of their employment, that person owns that logo. So you have to understand basics like that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, like I said, we mentioned before, is well, let me start, let me, let me say this. From the moment that work is in a fixed tangible form, so created, you have a common law copyright interest in that work. So that's why when people talk about having a poor man's copyright where you basically take it and mail it to yourself and all the other foolishness, like you don't have to do all that. Mm -hmm. From the moment you create it, you have a copyright interest in that work. However, like I mentioned earlier, you can't bring a federal lawsuit unless you have federal registration. That's one of the benefits to it. Another benefit to federal registration is that if something like this happens when and you bring the federal lawsuit, you have statutory damages, which means that you don't have to. Damages mean basically the money that you can be compensated because of the infringement. And so if you have statutory damages, that means they have a set amount, a dollar amount that you don't. So you don't even have to prove it. You have to prove the infringement, but you don't have to prove the actual loss. Like how much money did you actually lose mm -hmm. because B. Simone infringed on your copyrights? Like you don't have to actually prove that with statutory damages. But when you don't um, don't benefit from statutory damages, then you have to go and prove that. And that can be really expensive. And sometimes you don't even get the same amount of money as you would if you were getting statutory damages because the loss might not, the actual loss might not be that much. So the first thing to protect yourself is to know what copyrights are and what they protect to register your work, register your work. Um, and what that does is even though you have this common law interest in there, it, it's a record in the government database showing when the work was created, who the owner is, so that if you have to, if someone infringes on it, then you have some recourses because, so that is one scenario of infringement. Another one is, and I saw this a couple of years ago where someone wrote a book and then I think some like Netflix or some studio turned that book into a movie. Well, as a copyright owner, you have the exclusive right to create derivatives of that work. So that's why that's why copyrights and intellectual property are so valuable. It's not just about a sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. It's about everything that you can do with that. So if you write a book and now someone wants a movie, make a movie out of it, guess what they got to come to? They can't just say, oh, I like this book and turn it into a movie themselves. They got to come to you for it, meaning you get to dictate how much money you want to turn this book into a movie. That's another oh, wow. Thing of revenue. So that's why, that. <coughs> yeah, that's why it's so valuable. And then, and the answer is the same for like B. Simone, like what can they do? What was the, what was the second part of the question? Like what can um, they do? Um, what can um, celebrities like B. Simone do to avoid making the same mistake? And I'm gonna say this, we're not going to limit it to just celebrities like B. Simone. We're gonna make it anyone that's in business because I've seen so many people, you know, a few years ago, the Shade Room's uh, Facebook page was shut down. She had like 4 million followers. It was shut down because she kept getting reported for copyright violations because she kept taking pictures 
off of like other people's websites and using them on her website, not knowing that that's copyright infringement. So yeah. the n- number one thing that you can do is understand the basics of copyrights and trademarks so that you don't have these type of things happen. Like, and another thing too, when you're outsourcing in that contract that B. Simone had, you won't, if they're going to write something for you or create, whether it's that book or whether it's a logo or whatever it is, you want a clause in there that's going to make them, hold them accountable, that they are creating original work for you. You want to hold them accountable because if not, then all the heat's going to come on you. Yeah. So you want to have, you hold them accountable that they're creating original work for you and that if the work is not um, original, then they will stand in the gap for you. They will take the heat. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Can you tell us uh, what's the difference between copyright and the difference between trademark? Yes. So copyright protects work that are in original fixed, uh, original fixed tangible form. So that's like music, books, poems, you know, we've seen that art, those are protected by copyrights. Trademarks protect brand identifiers. Those brand identifiers, they help us consumers identify the source of a good or service. So when we see that swoosh on a shirt, on a shoe, we know that it's Nike, right? right. When we hear, um, what's, what's the tiger say? They're great. Mm-hmm. We know it's Frosty Flakes. Mm-hmm. So they help us identify brands. When we go to the store and we are used to buying a certain brand of peanut, peanut butter, we know that brand of peanut butter from another brand of peanut butter because of the name, the logo, the colors. Those are all brand identifiers. They help us make informed decisions. Like if you were to refer somebody to me, right, or something to me, I would know that I had the right thing because of what you told me. Yeah, so that's basically the difference. Trademarks protect brand identifiers. Copyrights protect original work in a fixed, tangible form. Okay. They're both forms of intellectual property. Sometimes they overlap. So Mm -hmm. think about it, a logo. A logo is a brand identifier, but if it is an original, if it has more graphics to it than text then it can also be a copyright and so it overlaps okay that makes sense that makes sense um as an attorney how would you handle the situation between um both parties with b simone and uh the boss girl bloggers did you get to see it because i have a screen share too did you get to see how the work looked very similar i I haven't seen it um show me okay i'm gonna do a screen share. I don't know why I always talk about it before I do it. And I'll talk myself through it, by the way. (laughs) 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 So let's see, is this Chrome window? Because I pulled it. Okay, B. Simone, share. All right. So here is the article in complex, um, complex complex.com, you guys. That's her apology. And this is, it is, will it make it bigger? Hopefully it makes it bigger. I'm going to try to pull it up on my... Uh, here it is. If you can see it right here. Here's uh, These are the questions. Um, I, uh, 50 questions to find your best self. And I don't see the top of that one. But I'll just read the first three questions, you guys. The first question says, what do I love about my life? And then on the other copy, it says, what do I love about my life? What do I... And second mm-hmm. one is, what do I feel about my life is missing? And how can I get more of what I need. And it's the exact same thing. And um, on both, they they look uh, pretty much identical. And the um, the blogger, um, actually, I could just read out her tweet, said it's been brought to my attention that at the Simone is selling my book with my content in word for word, in it word for word. And she's making a profit off of it, plagiarized content or of smaller content creators and then you know it goes from there but yeah would you could could someone hire like could an attorney could one attorney represent both parties and settle this or like how does that work like because b simone couldn't she said she couldn't really comment too much on the situation because now it's legal so i'm just curious to see like how does it go from here each attorney each party would need their own attorney because the attorneys are protecting the best interest of both parties and sometimes those interests will um, conflict. So they're talking about attorneys, they're not really talking about, so you could, could have a mediator okay. that could resolve it between both parties. But even if you had a mediator, I would think that both parties would still have an attorney to meet up with that mediator 
to resolve it, to make sure that they are doing and saying what they need to do in order to have the best outcome. Okay. One thing that I will say too, is sometimes you have plagiarism, which is using someone's work without giving them credit and you don't necessarily have um, copyright infringement because everything is not protected by copyrights. Copyrights don't protect short phrases. Um, they don't protect titles. They don't protect um, forms and they don't protect facts and things of that nature. So I think what be Simone, first thing she would do is really kind of just attack whether or not this work was even protected by copyrights in the first place. And I'm okay. not saying that it's not, but that's probably one thing that she would want to do. And then the other, on the other side, she would be arguing that this work is protected by copyrights. It's something that I came up with, created out of my own head, as I hear my clients say all the time, I created with this out of my own head. Um, and so that's the first thing that they would want to do is just to, to resolve it. But again, because, and she would probably want to resolve it because I doubt that she actually has a copyright for it. Mm -hmm. a, lot and, you know, of, a lot of people don't do that a lot of people don't file and protect their work through copyright and that's so and that brings up my next question and i, I know this is an extra question because like when you're talking you're opening up stuff so say for instance she did she just wrote it she is mm -hmm. not copywritten i don't know if it, it is boss girl blog right. if you're watching ever watch this i'm not sure if it is i'm not saying if it is or is not but let's just say it's not and then mm -hmm. you see your work pop up in someone else's uh, journal or something that they're selling. Somewhere. What yeah. would that be called? Would, I mean, what is the it's title? Still it's still copyright infringement. Just because it's not registered. Just remember what I said. It's from the moment you create that work and put it in a fixed, tangible form, it's protected by copyright. Now, whether or not you can bring a lawsuit is a whole nother animal. So she can go now that the infringement has happened. She can go and file a copyright for it. But one of the things that she'll be missing because the infringement has already happened is now she doesn't have statutory damages because she filed the copyright more than three months after it was created and before and, and after the infringement happened. So now she has to prove actual damages. They would want to settle this, both parties, because it can get expensive. Litigation is expensive. Yeah. Expensive. So they do definitely <laughs> want to um, settle this. Uh, right. And in, in which way they settle it, I'm not sure. So yeah, that's that's one thing to to keep in mind. Now, also keep in mind that you don't have to necessarily jump all the way to litigation. Um, there are cases where you can have cease and desist, tell them to basically stop publishing the book, stop printing the book because it has your information in there. If it's on a website, you can file a DMCA takedown, which basically um, something that was created a few uh, decades ago just to, because, you know, the internet makes it so easy to infringe, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something to help um, content creators really stop people from sh um, sharing their stuff on the internet without their permission, like infringing on their stuff. So you can go to the, what's it called, the domain host, like mm -hmm. the host, website host, mm -hmm. and say, hey, you're you're hosting something that's co that has copyright infringement in it, and they will shut it down. That's essentially kind of what happened with Facebook and and uh, who's the person in the shade room? So they kept getting these reports of copyright infringement. If they would not have done anything about it, then they could have been held liable. Okay, all right, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so um, moving from the Beast of situation, this guy is this was last year. But I was super curious about it. Uh, we're going to talk about Kylie Jenner. Um, according to an, an article in US. A today in late 2019, Kylie Jenner requested to trademark the phrase "rise and shine" mm -hmm. after the line went viral from footage of her singing to her daughter. Um, she also wanted to trademark the less formal phrase "rise and shine," and so it's like R I I I S E and then shine is S H I I N N E. Do you know what the um, outcome of that is, or or how does how does that work? So I did a story about this, I maybe mean, a podcast of sometime last year when she first filed. Because a lot of people were like, how in the world can she trademark "rise and shine"? It's such a popular and common phrase. Now she's going to try to prevent everybody from using "rise and shine," and that's not how trademarks work. So again, like I said, trademarks protect brand identifiers. When a business gets a trademark. They're not telling consumers and people that they can't ever use the phrase. Okay. What they're saying is you can't use it to, one, identify the source of a good or a service or to make a connection 
make it seem like there's a connection between you and the business mm. and that nature. So um, I remember when Prince was getting trademarked for the color purple. So people were like, oh, now we can't use the color purple because he's going to get a trademark for it. But that's not how that works. So we would still be able to use the phrase rise and shine. Um, unfortunately for Kylie Jenner, her trademark application, the one for just rise and shine, the, the, the way that it's correctly Stuck spelled, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, was denied. Okay. And the reason it was denied is because, again, trademarks protect brand identifiers and they help consumers identify the source of a good or a service. And the owner of the trademark, here's, here's the great thing, the owner of the trademark has the ability to exclude other people from using the same or similar mark um, and to promote or sell a same or related product or service. So in this case, she was getting a trademark for Rise and Shine for cosmetics. But her trademark application had opposition. Well, not opposition. It received an office action because there were two already registered trademarks for Rise and Shine. One was for shampoos. Let me see. I pulled it up. Mm -hmm. One was for, let me pull it up. Okay, one was for body oil, oils, fragrance, perfume. And then the other one was for shampoos, hair conditioners, and body soaps. And so what USPTO says is those things, those categories of things are related to cosmetics. So it could, because it's very likely that someone can be selling makeup, but then also be selling perfume. That's true. Okay. And body lotion and things of that nature. So they're related. So for that reason, they said, hey, we can't give you this trademark because of this. And she, they gave her six months to respond. So when, they, when you get all, issued an office action, which is an official communication from USPTO basically saying that we don't think you should get your trademark for whatever reason. And in this case it was likelihood of confusion. Then, then you have six months to respond. And I'm laughing because I'm looking at my dog in the window and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> <Let me in. laughs> but so you have six months to respond to that office action and if you don't respond then your application is abandoned and that's what happened with Kylie Jenner she didn't respond to that to yeah oh okay so that's Uh, what happened with that application someone named Rico said hey kind Lakanya Murray hey Rico (laughs) yeah I know Rico Rico. (laughs) okay um so um so no one could just take a household term and just make it their own that's, I mean, you can't try, but it might get, it's likelihood, it may get denied. Not necessarily, um, because keep in mind, there, there, there are two trademarks registered for Rise and Shine. We just talked about that. They have it registered for, so as long as you're not using, so let's, perfect example, Apple. Apple is a fruit, right? So it's common. Yeah. But Apple is using it in a way that's uncommon. We call it arbitrary. They're using it to identify the source of a computer. When people think of Apple, before they became big, they didn't associate Apple with computers, but now they do because of branding. So you can use common things of that nature, as long as you're not using it in a descriptive way. Okay, okay. Um, and we, you, you, you pretty much hinted on this was my next question. So when someone, yeah, someone I had, when someone trademark something, cause I used to think that as a consumer was like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't put this in anything now because someone trademarked it. Cause I was like, um, we were, uh, had like a, a hot girl summer brunch with one of my friend hosted a hot girl summer brunch. And I heard that Megan Stallion <laughs> trademarked it. I was like, I don't know what you do it, <laughs> but right. she was like, she probably- didn't go through yet, but you know. Oh, actually, you know what? I did one on her, too. Let's check real quick. Well, first of all, it depends on what she got a trademark for. If she didn't get a trademark for brunch or social gatherings, then, again, so your trademark protection is limited to how you use it. When you get a trademark, you don't get blanket protection until that brand becomes big and famous like Disney. You can't use Disney for anything because Disney is now big and famous and you would dilute their brand. Yeah. But I do want to check on that um, Meg the Stallion because I remember Hot Girl because when I did the podcast one of my concerns was that she did not put herself as the owner of that trademark her uh-huh. record label was the owner and then you know early this year in the last year yeah, whenever she it was, her contract. and even she get out of her contract guess who's gonna own the trademark um her record label that's why you got to understand the stuff and if you can like if you are already if you're an artist and you already have a name and stuff go in there with that trademark trademark that name before you go in there so that you own it and you can okay. license, it, license it to them for them to use but you own that and they can't take it away so that when you leave a label 
then ooh, this looks this looks fun. So I have Hot Girl Summer. I have one. Well, first of all, the twelve rec- records, and out of tw- twelve records, seven of them are dead. Can we see why? Just for a second, indulge me. Oh, this is just. I want to see what the author action said. Does this identify? It's probably does this identify a person? Um, no, this one's likelihood of confusion because again, they have tons of have so many windows opened up. <laughs> so that one was likelihood of confusion. What's this one? This one is mm-hmm. by, and they're all by different people. And they're all for clothing. So, again, I can't have a hot a trademark for hot, hot girl summer for clothing if someone else has a trademark for hot girl mm-hmm. summer for clothing, which that's what it's looking like. Oh, so this is her. In theory, entertainment, isn't that her? Wasn't that her label? That, um, I'm not sure. I can look it up real Let quick. Me sure. Yeah, I, I want to say that I think that it is all those are dead. I want to know why those are dead. Did they just what was the office action on that? Sounds like fun. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, here's one. Here's one. So one, another thing too is if there's if that mark is not going to act like a trademark and when people hear it, they don't think of a a, a, a good or service because it's so commonly used. It's like such a common Mark, no one would really think to identify it with a, a good or a service, then they can't get a trademark for it. Mm-hmm. And that's what this says. It says registration refused because it is a widely widely used commonplace phrase. Okay. And, no, and so that's that was pretty cool. Hot girl summer. But it wasn't until she made it that. So she did a trademark pass or I mean, uh, we don't have any registered trademarks for Hot Girl Summer. We have seven dead trademarks, and then we have five pending trademarks. Uh, let me go back to the list. I want to see who's filed a trademark for these. I wonder if, if it's Hot Girl Trademark Holdings. I'm pretty sure that that is um, Meg and mm-hmm. her her um, Rock Nation family. Mm-hmm doing that because all these pending ones now Mm -hmm. are for hot girl trademark coding Mm -hmm. okay so i'd be really excited to see yeah how that's going to play out so that's something that we should keep and definitely keep an eye out on let me see see see, now you got me going down rabbit hole this is what i do for fun it's going through that's interesting i have a question by the way too for you i'm listening um, um, someone asked, uh, what is Lacanya's advice on trademarks at the state level first? And this, and it's a two part question. Any benefits other than cost? No benefits at all. Uh, when you get a federal trademark, it's going to prevent people throughout the United States from using that trademark. So if you get a state trademark, it's only going to prevent people in that state, it won't prevent. So if you're in Alabama, people in Georgia can still use it. Okay. So if you plan on doing, if you plan on having a good or service that, and, and let me just clarify this. Don't, I'm not giving legal advice because I don't give legal advice over the phone or through videos. You can schedule a consultation, but this is just information. So in, for information's sake is that if you plan on doing work or providing a good or service throughout the United States, then get a federal trademark. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, just bottom line. If, you, if your intentions are to prevent other people throughout the United States from using that mark, get a federal trademark. Okay. Okay. Yep. I hope we got you, uh, Miss Davidson. All right. Um. Yeah, she got the same. She actually got the same refusal under the hot girl holdings. holdings. <coughs> yep. That's, that's interesting. That's look, yeah, that's something that I'll look into a little bit further. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's so it's so big now. Like, it's just a lot of people are. It, it's it's really interesting how how that works and stuff. Um, so I was earlier this year, you guys. I was being nosy at my job, <laughs> and I was like, so I, it was right, kind of, a really when 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 COVID hit. And I was like, you know, like everybody kept talking about social distancing. Everybody kept talking about social distancing. I was like, you know what? I bet somebody's 
you know, gonna trademark that. <laughs> and then I looked it up and I saw that someone was attempting to. Um, again, I, I mean, it was like a this was a new household term, but what what was the outcome of that? And it just, you know, I I I, I don't know why people do it. But it's like because it's such it's so it's kind of associated with something kind of negative at this point, I guess. Well, people try to jump on trends and they say, well, if everybody's talking about this and I can make money off of it. Again, trademarks protect brand identifiers. They help you make your mark in the in, in the mark, make your space, your place in the marketplace so that when you're in a crowded place, you'll be able to stand out. That's the whole point. If you are trying to build a brand around a fad, I don't I, I discourage that wholeheartedly. You build your brand. You might sell products around it, but don't build your brand off of that fad. And that's what these people are trying to do by trademark and social distancing. I will tell you there are about 29 pending trademarks for social distancing, which all, yeah, ranging from clothing to um, umbrellas to mats. And a lot of these people are using them in descriptive ways, meaning that someone has a social distancing mat where the basically it's a mat that marks what six feet apart is. That's descriptive. Like you, your name is like you're you're describing what the product, the use of the product is for. Mm -hmm. So, no, don't do that. Don't get a trademark for it in that way. Like you don't have to get a trademark that says social distancing in order to promote social distancing. Mm. You can build a whole brand. You can be known for selling social distancing products without having because everyone everyone in, is trying to get into the social distancing game. And so to build a brand around social distancing, in my opinion, it's just not the thing to do. Build another, get a, create your own unique brand. So if today's thing is social distancing, great, you should sell social distancing products. If something else, if next down the line, if something else pops up, you can sell products around that too, but it's not under that social distancing brand because it might not make sense. Does that, that make sense? Make sense? Yeah. It makes sense. All 29 of you guys need to call. Lakanya Murray and get this advice because I wouldn't even thought of that. Like, and I, I feel like a lot of people just, like you said, jump on the twin. And I said the twin, the, the trend, and just <laughs> and just get on it because that makes so much sense. I would rather mm -hmm. you know work with a vendor that's like, oh well, they do all this and you know they provide this product, this service versus just having the words and and things of that sort or just things that say it. Um. There's one, so I just put it in. So it was actually 51 trademarks um, that are filed. There's one that was filed before all this happened back in 2006. Oh, okay. Um, but they didn't get theirs approved either. Oh, um, they were uh, yeah, they were that in the know. beginning though. That was pretty cool. Right. Well, the only, and the only reason they didn't is because they didn't file. So actually, it was approved. To, it was um, on the way to be approved. They didn't find anything wrong with the application, but this person. Um, needed to file a proof that they were actually using it in commerce and they didn't do that. So maybe their business didn't launch or something of that nature. Okay. But this was before social distancing was a thing and was popular. So of course they would be able to get something of that nature because it wasn't what everyone was trying to do. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't on trend, it wasn't a fad. That's so like true. Black Girl Magic, you know, people getting trademarks and stuff for Black Girl Magic. Black Girl Magic is everywhere. When I think of Black, Black Girl Magic, I do not think of a particular brand. Yeah, because yeah. black girl magic is everywhere. So that's how that's my yeah that's my take on this whole social distancing thing. Okay, um, so um, let's see my my pretty much question uh, regarding it's kind of uh, for all in all. So for small content creators like YouTubers and bloggers and things of that sort, um, should when would they consider uh, to trademark something like on a, do you do it like when you first get started or do you do it when you just say, you know what, this is picking up momentum. Like what's the, what's, what's the, the time what's frame? The That's a great question. And what I always tell people when it comes to trademarks, I always want to know, do you have a business plan? Like, do you have a plan? Cause trademarks are investment. So anytime you make an investment, you want to have a plan in order to recoup that money. Right. So do mm -hmm. you have a business plan? That's going to say who you're serving, why you're serving them, how you plan on getting paid, how you reach them, you know, just the simple questions. If you have a business plan and this is something that you realize that is a marathon, not a sprint, 
right? A marathon, not a sprint. Then it's time to invest in a trademark. That's whether or not you launched yet or if you've already launched. So it just depends on where you are. If, but you you do need to ask your, you need to have a serious conversation with yourself because some people will get ideas and get really hype about it, but then two months down the line, they're like it fizzles out, and they're like, oh, this true. is a lot more work than I thought about, <laughs> right? <You know? laughs> and then that and unfortunately, that trademark, you know, in in the two months they decided that this was too much work, their application is still pending with USPTO because it takes three months. From the time that it's filed before it even gets on the examining attorney's desk. So, so not, you spent yeah. this money on a trademark and you have made the decision that you don't want to move far, far, you know, move ahead because it's too much work. But if you've done a business plan, then you would have known how much work was required and if you were yeah. going to be up to the task. So people say, well, should I make, I need to make money before I get my trademark? No, that's not necessarily true. You don't have to make a dime before you get, you just need to be serious and and have a plan on how you will make that dime. Um, some people say, what's something else that I hear? Oh, I can't even, I can't even think right now. Um, but that's the main thing that they have to make money before they get that trademark. You don't necessarily have to make money before you get that trademark. You just have to make sure there's three things. One, you have to make sure that your mark is associated with a good or a service. Mm -hmm. Two, you have to make sure that mark is unique. And three, it has to be in multiple states. Your good or service has to be available in multiple states. It doesn't mean you have to have a physical presence in multiple states, but that good or service is available just for, like you said earlier, I'm an attorney, I'm here in Alabama, but my clients are spread out throughout the United States so that my service is available in multiple states. And so I qualify for trademark protection. I have a couple of them. I think I have two and maybe one pending, something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, contracts. Um, so this, we're wrapping it up. Um, we're going to uh, talk about contracts for a minute. Uh, so as far as contracts are concerned, um, when is it appropriate? When is it appropriate um, for as a creator for uh, for someone to for you to have a contract and how would they be utilized? Like, um, I guess. In that sense, if you write something and someone wants to use it, do they need it or video or Any, pictures? Anytime you're working with third parties, you want to use a written contract. Contracts simply lay out the expectations for the parties so there's no confusion. So if you are editing a video for me, right, we're going to have a written contract that says that you're going to edit the video for me it's my responsibility to get you this video by whatever time frame I'm supposed to get it to you. You're going to get it back to me in a certain time frame. I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars. That payment is due on such and such date. If that payment is not paid, then then something happens. Mm -hmm. You know, things of that nature. That's what you. So there's no confusion. No. Okay. Okay. See, and you want to do it beforehand, right? When everything is all good and gravy, versus afterwards. You know, you want to have this mm -hmm. conversation when you're level headed because after if there's a problem and y'all both are not on the same page, now it's going to really be really difficult to have that conversation. And people forget. People have short memories when they want to. <laughs> and contracts, contracts will make sure that that doesn't happen. That's true. That's true. That's true. Um, so well, we just have like three people tuning in. You guys, if you have a question, it has to be related to um, one of the topics we had today or like a, a, a scenario or something like that. Um, don't don't ask any legal advice. So um, does anybody have any questions right now? If not, I'm just going to go to your website, Connie, because I saw you had some ebooks I wanted to show people. OK, cool. OK, yeah. I'm going to talk myself through the directions again, people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I do that. <laughs> I, and it's like I can't do it unless I say it. Right. You got to talk yourself to it. Yeah. Share screen. <laughs> Let's see. Application oh. window. Oh, Chrome this window. Puppy is so cute. You need to bring her on. We wrap it up. Okay. Just bring her on. I'm going to go get her. Let me see if you, while you yeah. put that up, I'm going to go get her. Because I want to <gasps> see. I love puppies. Let me. Um... Lilo. Come here, Lilo. Hey, Lee okay. to the low. Come here, girl. You can't so big. Of... You want to come see? You want to see the people, Lilo? Are you going to be good for the people, Lilo? Lilo, Lilo. 
Hi, Lilo. Oh, what kind of dog is he? She is oh, a she, she boxer. Is. Yeah, uh -huh. boxer pit bull mix. I put y'all coming. Hey, yeah. okay. And she got little black spots all over her. Uh -huh. How old is she? About three months. Mm-hmm, exactly. She's 12 weeks old, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's going to be kind of big, because they always say look at the paws to see how, mm -hmm. like, uh, to get the size. Oh, she's super sweet. Is I love she, puppies. She's super sweet. Are you super sweet, Lilo? Lilo, Lilo are you super sweet? She's super sweet. Just nice. I just wanted some attention, and that's mm -hmm. all. The that girls were sweet. fighting amongst themselves, and so she was the result. She got put outside because the girls couldn't get along so they took it out on my lilo oh don't take it out on my lilo dang she's so cute oh, my word. let me oh, my word. let me go back to your website i i wanted to see her let's see say oh share screen there's me reading my directions again uh are you leaving oh. me lilo bye lilo Ellie. you have some books so you guys if you guys it, I, I know it takes a minute. I, well, I went on there the other day, but so she, um, so. Oh, she you know some, what? Uh-huh. My website was, I don't know if it was hacked or what. So maybe some of the pictures, I didn't check every page. Some of the pictures might not have been added back and I need to go and add them. Uh, um, They came up, they popped up later. Uh, uh, okay. When I uh, did, I'm scared to hit refresh because I'm not sure how is going to do while I'm yeah. in the program. But you guys, you can still, once we get off, you know, I mean, this this interview is going to, you know, be played and I'm going to take clips and stuff from it. So you guys, there's a complete guide to trademarking. Um, can you give us just a small, like, uh, what who, okay. who would be the person, What who's the client that would need this? Those are the people who are like, I need to know a little bit more about trademarks. I want to know, and it's really for people who, want to trademark but they're afraid or they don't have the money to so this just gives them a little insight on trademarks and what they can do to protect their brand when they're first starting out and really low on cash so it talks about common law trademarks it talks about you know how to make a strong trademark it talks about the trademarking process it's really a short um e-guide um if you would to trademarks okay okay um where oh i see my face you know and you guys i when i watch my videos over sometimes i see myself looking at stuff and i have my mouth open as i'm searching so it's good to know that i just saw myself because now i'm like i can focus on keeping my mouth closed um <laughs> the workbook for those ready to get ish done so yes. who would be, what's the what who is who is the person that needs this that might be listening right now or when we replay this who needs this, this one? If you don't have a business plan, it's time to get your ish together. That's what this is. This is the business plan workbook. I actually have, this is not the final copy. I don't have any of the final copies with me, but this was, this was going to be the cover, but I decided to take my face off of it because, yeah, too much. But what, the, <laughs> what it is, is it's a workbook. Most pro people have a problem with business plans because they don't know what questions to ask. They have no mm -hmm. idea, so they get intimidated. Yeah, I intimidated. take the guesswork out of that for you. I don't know if you can see that by I asking can. I love it. all of the questions that you need. So we tackle everything from how much to price your products, who your market is, how to choose the right um, business entity, where you want to market, um, team members, your ideal client, money, how much is it going to cost to do this thing. So yeah, this was this is really good. I'll tell you a quick story. When I launched last year, I, I relaunched a course that I had launched years before. And when I launched it years before, I made like three hundred dollars off of it. When I relaunched it, I did the business plan workbook, which the beauty of the business plan workbook it makes you do research. You make it actually makes you do the market research you should do before you launch. So when I did that, I was able to find people or um, who had similar courses, how much they charge, which was going to be way more than what I was charging. Um, marketing plans, how they market it, and I was able to earn ten thousand dollars in like three weeks. Because, oh, awesome! Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome because of, only and only because I did the work because I did the research because mm -hmm. the business plan workbook made me do it. 
So that's the beauty of having that. So even if you're in business, like I've been in business for myself since 2012, but I was la- launching a new product. So I pulled out the business plan workbook to help me through that product. Okay. And I have it available. So it's available um, on Amazon if you want, because I believe in writing. So the physical copy is available on, on Amazon. And then I have the digital copy available on my website, but the digital copy is only available if you have an iPad that has a pencil or a tablet that has a pencil so that you can download it and actually write. There's a connection uh, between writing mm-hmm. and retaining information. And I want to yes. make sure that you're not typing. I want you to write. If you're going to type it, no, get no, go get the physical one from Amazon if you don't have a tablet or something that's going to let you write. It is. It's so, it is. I, I have to. I, I like to still touch books. We have one more, guys. It's called The Book That Makes You Becoming Your Own Boss Easier. So who um, would be a candidate for this book? This book is for those people who are looking to start a business and they don't know where to start. So okay. when I first started my business, the first thing people say is, what do I need to know? I'm starting this business. What do I need to know legally to launch my business? So this one covers everything. So basically it's legal basics. I call it the legal basic handbook. So it talks about everything from written contracts to intellectual property. Again, choosing the right business entity um, and just different legal principles you need to be aware of when you're starting your business. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's a really quick, it's a quick read. I don't believe in fluff. I just, just kind of get information just out there to the people. Okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. All right. Well, you guys, um, that was, uh, we didn't have any questions, but I'm, I, I really enjoyed the show, Connie. That was good. You really spit some really good jewels. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for having me, friend. I'm so excited to do this with you. Like, I know. I was like, you know, it's always, I, can, I think people can always tell when I know someone because I blush like over the top uh, <laughs> when they're from the past. It's so crazy. I was like, we're little ladies now. Everybody know they're okay. You guys, I met Connie in college. Like, I, I, it's been maybe like two years ago. Since I graduated, <laughs> I know, right? Two years ago, <laughs> but it, it's been a, it's been a it's been a while. We we met each other at, at UAB. I, well, yeah, you were you living in yeah, Birmingham then? Too? No, I mean, I'm not living in Birmingham, in Birmingham but yeah, I was at and, UAB living in Birmingham. Can I just tell you? Yes. Um, so we're talking about UAB. Do you know that child is now twenty? Yes. <laughs> oh my God! Like <laughs> she's age we were. Right. She was, yes, and TJ is so cute, you guys. Kind of had a little girl. Well, she's a grown woman now, TJ, and she was so cute, and she's such a sweet. She was such a sweet little girl. So, um, and she's in college too. Yes, twenty. Oh, uh. yes. Good. Goodness, yes, goodness. Even I'm just 20 myself, right? I'm just 20 you myself. are. You are. You have an age a bit, honey. Not we look it, good. <laughs> we, do, we do look good. We do look good. We look good. We do. Yes. No lie. We look good. Yes. Taking care. Leveling up. Well, thank yes. you for coming on my show. Let me um put my, I put my, uh go to my um uh stuff. So you guys make sure that you go to Connie's website at laconiamurray.com. And also let me put her name up here. So we could, um, uh, Follow her on Instagram. And is your podcast, is, um, is it just on, uh, is it on YouTube or is it on any type of uh, other? Yeah, it's on YouTube, uh, Apple. Well, I'm sorry. They call it iTunes. No, they call it Apple Podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Intune, Stitcher. Yeah, those, that's where it is in those places. Okay. And I had a spell right, LaCanya Murray, right? I don't see it, but yeah, L A C O N Y A. Uh huh. M U R R A Y. Okay. Okay. And she's on Facebook, YouTube, IG, and you can get her on LinkedIn. Make sure you guys um, go get one of her workbooks, support her. And if you guys, I mean, she can um, help you with trademarks, you know, um, if you're here in the DFW area. So you guys go to her website. She's very knowledgeable, as you can see, down to earth, as you can see. So, you know, support her. You okay. Can schedule a consultation. Um, yes. If you have more questions, if you, have, if you need legal advice, you say, hey, how does this apply to me? I'm thinking about doing this. Schedule a consultation. Let's work it out. Um, let's schedule a brand development and protection consultation. 
I like that name. I like that name. So there you go, you guys. Follow mm -hmm. her. And thank you again for coming on the show, honey. Thank y'all for pleasure. tuning in.